Welcome back to IGCC Computer Science. This is topic four, software, and this is video two, whereby we're gonna be looking at operating systems, and in particular, human computer interfaces. Okay, this is a big, a big chapter. It's also a big section, operating systems. So we're just looking at one bullet point. We've got all of this to cover um, in the near future. So what is an operating systems? Well, in order for computers to function correctly and allow users to communicate with them, software known as an operating system needs to be installed. An operating system provides both the environment in which applications can be run and a usable interface between humans and the computer. An operating system makes using computer hardware much easier. Examples of operating systems include Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS, Google Android and Apple iOS. The latter two, of course, um, are used primarily on tablets and on smartphones. Here are some of the logos for them, with Linux, um, Android, of course. So what is the purpose of the operating system? We've just gone through sort of the basics, but the operating system can, has got many, many different tasks. First of all, it is a human computer interface. It's a way of linking the computer, as we said before, to um, so a user can use it. It enables multitasking, so you can work on more than one thing at once. It is a platform for running application software, software that you install on the computer. Management of user accounts, managing files, managing hardware peripherals, including the drivers that enable you to print documents out, um, to scan files in, to connect your phone to the computer. All these things require drivers. It um, sorts out the memory management, the RAM on the computer, and also the hard disks. It looks after interrupts, it deals with interrupt handling routines, and it also looks after the security, managing logons and passwords to protect your computer from prying eyes and people trying to get into in, access your files. So, so first of all, we're gonna break the human computer interface down into two parts. We either have a command line interface, and we see this here, um, CLI or a graphic user interface, the one you're probably more familiar with. The command line interface requires a user to type in instructions in order to choose options from menus and open software, etc. There are usually commands that need to be typed in, for example, save or load a file. The user needs to learn several commands just to carry out basic operations. It is also slow having to key in these commands every time an operation has to be carried out. What I want to do is show you, I'm, going to, I'm on a MacBook, so I'm just going to go down to Launchpad and type in Terminal. And here we've got a copy of basically almost like a command line interface. As you can see, it's me who's logged on. So if I want to look at what files I've got on the computer, I'm just going to type in ls for list and we'll put a backslash l. And you can see these are all the files I've got installed, all the folders and files. Um, what I can also do with this, I'm, I'm not going to go into any great detail, but if I go ls um, minus a, I can also search and find the ones with the dots on, all the hidden files I've got on the computer. Okay? Now, the one that you're probably most familiar with is the graphic user interface. Um, this allows the user to interact with a computer or digital device such as an MP3 player, a gaming device, or even a mobile phone, as you can see here. A graphic user interface uses pictures or symbols, little icons, um, rather than having to type in a number of commands. Simply clicking on any of the icons from the screen would automatically load the application ready to be used. There is no need to type um, in anything here. The graphic user interface um, uses various technologies and devices to provide the user interface. One of the most common is a WIMP, a WIMP, Windows icons, menus, and pointing devices. Basically, the pointing device, as you can see here, like this, is my trackpad or my mouse controlling a cursor on the screen. The WIMP was developed for use on personal computers or PCs. Here, a mouse is used to control a cursor, and icons are selected to open run windows. Each window contains an application, and modern computer systems allow several windows to be open at the same time, i.e. multitasking. So let's um, go over what the differences are between a GUI and a CLI interface. Well, first of all, we'll take the advantages. A command line interface, the user is in direct communication with the computer. The user is not restricted to a number of predetermined options. 
It is possible to alter computer configuration settings. It uses a small amount of computer memory. Whereas a graphic user interface, the user doesn't the user doesn't need to learn any commands. It is more user friendly. Icons are used to represent applications. A pointing device such as a mouse or a trackpad is used to click on an icon to launch the application. This is much simpler than typing in commands or a touch screen can be used where applications are chosen by simply clicking on the icon on the screen with your finger or, or, a, or a pointing device, a, um, a stylus or an Apple pen. The disadvantages for a command line interface, the user needs to learn a number of commands to carry out basic operations. All commands need to be typed in which takes times and can be error prone. Each command must be typed in using the correct format, spelling and so on. The graphic user interface has disadvantages. This type of interface is used up considerably more computer memory than a CLI interface. The user is limited to the icons provided on the screen. It needs an operating system such as Windows to operate, which uses up a considerable amount of memory. Command line interface. Who's going to use the command line interface? Um, two examples here. A programmer, analysis, or a technician, basically somebody who needs to have direct communication with a computer to develop new software, locate errors and remove them, initiate memory dumps, contents of the computer memory at some moment in time and so on. Somebody who can sort of get into the into the background um, and, and, and locate and fix errors, remove errors. This is the person who would be using the command line interface. Um, the graphic user interface, the end user who doesn't have or doesn't need to have any great knowledge of how a computer works, a person who uses the computer to run software or play games, browse the internet, or store and manipulate photographs, for example. Basically, the majority of people would use a, or would choose an operating system with a graphic user interface. I just want to go, I just want to go over some of the tasks of an operating system to break down that initial spider diagram and, um, and go into a little bit more detail. So first of all, memory management. What does the operating system do in terms of memory management? Um, it manages the primary storage of the RAM and allows data to be moved between RAM and the um, hard disk or the SSD during the execution of programs. It keeps track of all the memory locations. It carries out memory protection to ensure that two competing applications cannot use the same memory locations at the same time. If this wasn't done, and the following might happen. Data would probably be lost. Applications could produce incorrect results, potential security issues, and in some extreme cases, the computer would inevitably crash the blue screen of death. Security management. Um, an operating system uses security management. How does it do it? Well, security management is another job of the operating system. Its function is to ensure the integrity, confidentiality, and availability of data within the computer. Tasks include carrying out updates as and when they become available, ensuring that antivirus software is always up to date, communicating with a firewall to check all traffic to and from the computer. It uses privileges to prevent users entering private areas of the computer that permits multi-user activity. Um, it helps to ensure the privacy of data, um, maintaining access rights for all users, offering the ability for the recovery of data when it has been lost or corrupted, and it helps to prevent illegal intrusion into the computer. Hardware peripheral management. Again, this involves the management of all the input and output peripheral devices. The tasks for this include communication with all input and output devices using device drivers, ensuring each hardware resource has a priority so that they can be used and released as required, it manages input and output devices by controlling queues and buffers. For example, the role of the printer management when printing out a document would be first the printer driver is located and loaded into memory. The data is sent to the printer buffer, ready for printing. If the printer is busy, then the data is sent to a printer queue before it can be sent to the printer buffer. It receives and handles any errors, any error messages and interrupts from the computer, i.e. the printer is out of paper or the printer is out of ink or there is a paper jam. File management. File management tasks include file naming conventions. You can see a few variations here but we've got basically a, um, a word document file name dot doc 
okay um, perform specific tasks such as create open close delete rename copy and move files it maintains directory structures putting folders within folders putting files within those folders ensuring access control mechanisms are maintained for example access rights to files password protection or making files available for editing or locking them and finally ensuring memory allocation for a file by reading it from the hard disk or the solid state drive and loading it into memory we mentioned before multitasking now multitasking as i said before means computers can carry out more than one task at a time each of these tasks will share the cpu and memory under the control of the operating system we can see this here cpu to make sure that multitasking operates correctly the operating system needs to continue monitoring each of the processes resources are allocated to a task for a specific time limit the task can be interrupted while it is running the task is given a priority so it can have resources according to its priority and finally i just want to mention management of user accounts um, computers allow more than one user to log into the system more than one user to log into the computer it is therefore important that users data is stored in separate parts of memory for security reasons each person logging onto the computer will be given a user account um, protected by the username and password the operating system is given the task of managing these different accounts this allows each user to customize their screen layout and other settings use separate folders and files and to manage these themselves usually an administrator oversees the management of these user accounts the administrator can create accounts delete user accounts and restrict user account activity ladies and gentlemen that is it for this video a whistle stop tour of operating systems you need to learn hci human computer interface and the two separate parts from that the graphic user interface and the command line interface until next time thank you very much indeed for watching uh, the next video will be launched very very soon i want to finish the software section um, please subscribe please hit the notification button and this will let you know as soon as it is ready thank you very much indeed i will see you next time bye for now